Hey everybody, it's Brandon the Weekend Cruiser where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend and this is probably going to be my most controversial, maybe not, my follow-up video to this might be more controversial, my most controversial video I have made yet. I am going to roll back the curtains on how much I personally tip on a cruise ship. So as you all know, the crew here is working extremely hard. Um, they have such work ethic and diligence and I tip them. And so I wanted to share with all of you what my strategy is for tipping. I've gotten many questions, especially, especially around some of the specialty roles on how much is appropriate to tip these people. And the only way I know how to answer that is to share what I personally do. Now, when it comes to tipping, there's no wrong or right answer to how you tip. The sheer nature of tipping means that it is 100% in your discretion to decide if the per people that you are working with deserve a tip or not. And so that's totally up to you. That's the way the system is set up. Yes, people have thoughts on which way you should do it, you should not do it, but it's 100% your decision to tip as you want to. Me personally, I am not a fan of a tipping system because I don't think that we're the best judge of what all went into their effort, if it was their fault, if something went wrong, or you know what links they went through to bring something that to happen well that you know we just don't know what goes into that. I don't think cruisers should be evaluating the crew on how much money they should make. That's just me personally. However, we live in a tipping world and a tipping society, especially here in the US. So all of my European um, followers that are out there, I know that this may be a very different culture for you all, but I do come on the cruise ships. I tip willingly, even though I don't like to tip, I don't like the concept of tipping, I still tip and reward all the great service that I am getting on board. So let's roll back those curtains and show you how I tip for 17 different roles on the cruise ship. That's right, there are 17 different roles on a cruise ship that you probably should be thinking of how you want to tip them. Now I've made a list here and I'm going to go through these and this is clearly just what I do or how I tip. If I have left somebody out or you have you know a disagreement or you want to chat through what you do, I'd be more than glad to also see what everybody else is tipping to see if I'm in a line with that. But people don't often share tipping. It's a little taboo, if you will. And so I'm putting mine out there on faith. So be kind in the comments if you don't agree with me or you know maybe you think I'm Daddy Warbucks over here just throwing out all sorts of money at these folks. Um, but be kind in the comments and, you know, chime in with some useful information. I would love to see what other people are also doing. So to start with, I'm going to do this kind of in order of who I think you would interact with at the port. So starting off, you have your porters. So if you are checking your luggage, so you get in, the porters will take your luggage directly to your room. So you don't have to lug a 50 or 75 pound suitcase. I've seen some of y'all pack. Um, to your stateroom, you can have these guys do it. They do operate on tips. Most people that I have talked to and myself do around two to three dollars per suitcase. So if you are coming with a family of 10 in a big suburban, make sure that you've got a little bit of money that you can tip these guys out for all of their service. The next person you're going to run into is going to be your bartender. So most of you are going to get straight on the ship and you're going to the bar. So tipping is traditionally on land done by per drink. So I am somebody who's going to tip a dollar per drink. If you are doing the deluxe beverage package, there's an automatic gratuity of 18% that's going to be levied on that. If you that deluxe package is around 70 bucks, it's going to come out to around $12.60 per day. So that's going to be split amongst many people. I would still say even with that, and I know you guys don't like this because you feel like it's already paid, I would still put tip a little bit more on top of the automatic 18% gratuity just because I'm used to tipping a dollar per drink and I know that if I am you know, drinking more than that or if it's being split amongst many people who I might not interact with, the person I got the drink from might not actually get that dollar. And by the way, all of these hand payments, if you pay somebody in cash, that person keeps that money. It doesn't go into a pool unless those people have agreed to it, which I've seen in a few places, but traditionally, it's going to be rewarding that exact person for their service. You're also going to have main dining room. So after you 
drink a few times, you know, hopefully you're gonna get some food. If you're in the main dining room, you're also gonna wanna think of tipping these folks. And there's a lot of people that work in here um, if you are doing automatic gratuities, some of this is going to be covered here, but make sure that you're staying tuned to my next video. If you have not subscribed to this channel, make sure you're doing that where I'm going to pull the curtain back on automatic gratuities and tell you all that I know on how that system works. But when you're in the main dining room, what I tip is $3 for the assistant waiter per day. I do about $4 for the actual waiter, the one who's going to take your food orders, the head waiter and the maitre d'. I personally don't tip them out or have never tipped them out. Um, I know if you do automatic gratuities, it will be counted inside of that. Me personally, I've never tipped those guys. Specialty dining. This is another great one. Gratuity is included in your specialty dining, but for the level of service and the level of food that I'm getting there, I will still tip $10 per day per visit to a specialty restaurant. If I go to Chops, it's $10. If I go to Giovanni's, it's $10. Just $10 flat, not necessarily based on the price that I paid for that specialty dining restaurant. If I am, um, you know, feeling like I need a little bit of a pick me up, I'm also going to go to Cafe Promenade. Now, this is an interesting place. And so sometimes I tip here and sometimes I don't. If the cafe has a machine like the little scan your card machine um, and it asks for a tip, I will tip them a dollar per visit. If it does not have one, Oftentimes I won't tip them, um, which I hate to say that because they're wonderful people. I love them um, unless I'm on the ship for a long period of time. If I'm there for multiple sailings, um, I'll walk down there at the end of the last one and give them like a big tip. And traditionally, I'm probably going to average that to about one dollar per day um, for the main baristas and people that were taking my orders. Your stateroom attendant. So this is another big one. And, you know, I think this one is where there's going to be a lot of variability because some of you are just really messy. Like, I don't know if y'all look into the rooms like I do when you're walking by, but some of the ways that y'all keep your rooms is ridiculously crazy. I'm a pretty neat person, as you can hopefully see back here. And it's also just me in the room. So clean up behind me is honestly not too big of a deal. Um, I mean, making the bed is just you pull it down because I don't mess it up any. But I do tip the stateroom attendant traditionally around $5 per day is what it's coming in at. So that's what I'm doing for them as my general rule of thumb. Um, you know, and if you keep your room messier or more clean, or maybe you only have them come once a day and not twice a day, this may change the amount that you want to tip. Room service. So if you're calling for room service to come to your room to deliver, there's a flat fee for that. Um, I don't believe that tips are included in that. It's $7.95, so even if it was 18% gratuity, you're talking chump change at that point, not very much. Um, I also will tip 2 or $3 for room service for people that I have requested to come to my room. That is not if they're sending me strawberries or one of my current anchor society um, amenities, if you will. The fruit truffles is what I'm getting now. I won't tip out on that, but if, they, if I request something, um, I will tip on that one. Um, your concierges. So a lot of you may have access to the three different lounges that are on the ship. Those are going to be your diamond lounge, your sweet lounge, and now your pinnacle lounge that we've had for a little bit of time, but those could be going away on March 15th. Um, those concierges there do have the ability to help you to book reservations and go really above and beyond for what you need. If you are utilizing their services, I would absolutely tip them um, if they're just making reservations for me, traditionally that's going to be about $5 is what I'm going to tip. But in the past, I've asked them to throw birthday parties for people, a pinnacle party. They have gone above and beyond in so many ways, and then I will tip them much more to really help bring that experience to life and make it truly memorable for those of us that are on the cruise. So this is an interesting one. So if you've seen my star class video, the Royal Genie is also a huge benefit and very similar to the concierge. Tipping out your Royal Genie is going to depend on how much you really utilize them and their services. To some folks, they are going to make your experience priceless and they are going to make it so easy for you and the people that you are cruising with that you're going to want to give them probably a lot of money. And given that this is star class, People traditionally already have a good bit of money, a discretionary money, because they're already in a really high-end room. And so I have heard crazy numbers on what the Royal Genies are tipped. Um, we tipped about $20 to $50 per day is what I'll say, is what we've done in the past. It really depends on how you're using the people. But I've heard people going all the way up to $100 per day. Um, I think that this is really how you utilize that experience and how your Royal Genie brings your entire trip to life for you and what you then would value that at. 
you also are going to have some music performers. So this might be one that you all don't think about. Oftentimes, these music performers will have a little bin up at the front. So think the schooner bar, for instance. If there's a gentleman or a woman playing in the schooner bar taking song requests, if you request a song, it would be customary at that point to then tip two or three dollars to say thank you. If they're doing a great job and we have some wonderful performers on these ships, make sure that you're, you know, giving even more just to say thank you. Maybe you didn't request a song, but if you sat there for two or three hours, you sang along the entire time, you were clapping, you were having a great time, um, make sure that you are showing some appreciation for those folks as well. Spa services is another one where you're going to have automatic 18% gratuity built into whatever the package is that you you buy. So if you want a massage that comes in at, let's say, $150, you're going to have 18% on top of that that you're automatically going to have to pay. Um, and they're not going to remove that for you. I've heard people try their best to have that removed. That will not be removed for you, so go ahead and know it in advance. However, there is always the option for you to tip more if you think that you just got the best deep tissue massage that you have ever gotten, that they did a really good job, or maybe they honed in on that one place that you're really having some pain with. This might be a place where you want to tip them a little bit more. Traditionally, I mean, I'm not a connoisseur of massages, but when I've been in there, I've just allowed the 18% to kind of cover my gratuity, and I have not tipped above and beyond that. If you were going on excursions, so if you have like a bus route where they're driving you through a city and they're talking to you about what all there is to do there, some of the history and culture, it is customary to then tip out the tour guide. So you may purchase the excursion. It does not necessarily come with tips included, but if you were, when you're getting off of the van, the bus at the end of it, it is customary to tip those individuals. I'll traditionally do about five to $10, depending on how engaging that person was, how good I thought they were. And then there's some people that are also going to tip out the driver of that bus. So even though they just drive, they got you to point A and point B safely, you can also tip out on them. I traditionally don't tip the driver, though. I just tip the tour guide. You're also, if you're going for a high-end experience, going to have cabana attendants, especially at Coco Cay. So if you are here in Coco Cay and you're getting maybe the overwater cabana, you're doing a cabana at the Coco Beach Club, there's a dedicated person that you are going to work with that's going to be assigned to you to make sure that you are having a great experience. They're going to run your food back and forth, bring you drinks the entire day from opening to closing. And so that is certainly worth something. They work extremely hard out there in the heat. So for cabana attendance, if we're doing the overwater cabana, traditionally we're going to do $20 per person. There's normally about eight of us because we like to get the best value and split that. So all eight of us would chip in and give $20 to the cabana attendant. If we are doing just a normal cabana, one that's on the beach or one that is uh, maybe over by Oasis Lagoon, we're going to do about $10 per person um, because there's not as much involved with that level of service. From there, I mean, the next thing that you can do, and so this is not a role, but if you don't want to actually tip people out in money, something that is free to you to do is to simply just thank people, give them your kind words, and more importantly, fill out your survey. So they are a huge fan of getting positive feedback in the surveys. Make sure you're using their name. This is something I try to do very often. They absolutely look at these reports. They will absolutely see if they were called out and somebody recognized them in the survey for exceptional service. So make sure that you're doing that. It's something that is absolutely free to you. It just takes a little bit of time to click through the buttons, add some information, and that's going to do wonders. You can also brag to their superiors. So if you're in the dining room and the head waiter for your section comes over, maybe the maitre d' comes over, make sure that you're telling them how good your assistant waiter and waiter are doing to take care of you and really make sure that you're having a great experience. Again, these are totally free things that you can do that don't cost you money. So if I have forgotten anyone in this, please leave it in the comments. Love to hear what you guys are tipping out for those. Um, and hope that this video has brought a little bit of value or a little bit of clarity around how I tip. And maybe you can check and see if that you're in alignment with that. If you are, you're not. You can then make a decision on if you want to adjust. But again, totally up to you. It is discretionary tipping. All right, everybody. This is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you tipping and showing your appreciation for the crew on board your next Weekend Cruise.